election returns started coming in Tuesday night in New York City, it was clear things had not gone well for mayoral candidate Andrew Yang. In the first round of ranked choice voting tabulations, he finished a distant fourth. After having spent much of the winter and spring as a leading candidate in this race, Yang entered the mayoral campaign fresh off an unsuccessful presidential campaign where his innovative ideas around universal basic income, sharp focuses on the challenges posed by automation and artificial intelligence, and upbeat demeanor seemingly caught the attention of pundits and voters alike. So far, so good. This is true. I absolutely agree. Though Yang didn't win the uh, presidency, he definitely shifted the Overton window on UBI. He had all eyes on him. Yet he failed to realize the kind of coalition he would need to build to win a Democratic primary in New York City. Instead of focusing much energy on black and Latino voters, he tried to cobble together a new coalition of Asian Americans, ultra-Orthodox Jews, and young moderates. And even in that, he appears to only have partially succeeded. Okay. Yang performed well in the Chinese-American parts of Queens and Manhattan. Overall in Queens, which should have been as strong as Borough because of its substantial Asian American population, Yang finished a disappointing third behind two African American candidates, Eric Adams and Maya Wiley. Yang also finished third in Staten Island, the borough that produced by far the fewest votes in Tuesday's primary, and fourth in the other three boroughs. Yang's ultra-Orthodox Jewish supporters, according to the precinct-level data, stuck with him, but he did not expand his base much beyond that. Additionally, in more moderate parts of Manhattan, like the Upper East Side, he was trounced by Catherine Garcia, which nobody saw coming. Yang's campaign got very little support in heavily black and Latino parts of the city, including Central Brooklyn, Southeast Queens, Northern Manhattan, and almost all of the Bronx. In those areas which constitute a significant portion of primary voters, Adams and Wiley performed the best, and this is likely why they have been catapulted to first and second place in the first round of ballot counting. During the campaign, Yang transformed from the upbeat and innovative campaign candidate we saw in 2020 presidential race into a seemingly angry urban reactionary. Yang began the race as a cheerleader for post-COVID New York, although he presented several policy proposals to get the city back on track, such as providing cash for the poorest people in the city, and free tutoring for public school children. As the campaign progressed and crime became a dominant issue, Yang drifted from his idealism to a fiery conservative rhetoric about getting tough on crime. He even began the last debate by boasting of the support he had from the Captain's Benevolent Association, a prominent police union. It was almost as if Yang didn't realize that police unions are not so popular among Democratic primary voters in New York. In the same debate, Yang responded to a question about helping people who are mentally ill by showing a flash of temper when he said they have rights, but you know who else have rights? We do, the people and families of the city, further minimizing the needs of this already marginalized community. Shortly after, in a radio interview, he fleshed out his comments, we all see these mentally ill people in our streets and subways, and you know who else sees them? Tourists. And they don't come back, and they tell their friends, don't go to New York City. There is an audience for this kind of insensitivity, but as is evidenced from some of the early precinct data, they do not reside in neighborhoods like the Upper West Side, Chelsea, Harlem, Park Slope, and other areas where large numbers of Democratic primary voters live. Okay, so, first question that we're going to throw on the table. Why couldn't Yang connect with black and Latino voters? Yang's a smart guy. I don't think he... Um, he intentionally went out of his way to not try to reel those voters in. I mean, you don't go uh, into New York thinking you're going to be the mayor without trying to reel those those people in that just wouldn't make sense like you you're not gonna win um if you don't have the support from black and latino communities in new york city so there's an, i i think the article is wrong in the sense that he tried to target only the asian community and the ultra-orthodox jews um i think yang wanted everybody's support 
Um, now, did he fail to get the black and Latino support? Okay, yeah. I mean, that, that shows for itself. Now, people have DM'd me. People have reached out. I've seen all sorts of, if you go to the, the darkest parts of uh, social media, Twitter, for example, um, you'll see a lot of racist rhetoric, right? Usually I block those people. Usually I block those people. I don't want to see it. I don't need to see it. But um, in some of the darkest corners of Twitter and from just people I've spoken to in the real world, right? Um, race definitely played a factor. I mean, there's neither no if ands, or buts about it. Race played a factor to a much larger degree uh, than people realize. To the point where it doesn't matter how good his ideas was. Um, since he was Asian, he wasn't going to get their vote. And there's a lot of misconceptions that are that were strewn about. You know, that Asian people don't like black people. That black people don't like Asian people. As if it was just like, oh yeah, this is, this is what it is. I haven't experienced that in my life. Asian people fucking love me. <laughs> true that, true that. So I don't, I don't fucking know where this, where, where, where that energy is coming from in 2021. But apparently some people still have it. Um, I've met Andrew Yang. I've hung out with Andrew Yang. I know Andrew Yang. It's not, there's not a racist bone in his body. So there is definitely a disconnect there. That is apparent. Um, my question is, what could he have done to get the embracement from those communities. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think Yang could have done differently during this mayoral campaign to get the black and Latino community to support him? I'm very curious what your ideas are. Now, that being said, he did have an opportunity to uh, to kind of go in that direction to get some embracement from them. It, it, it could have happened. Um, Apparently, Dave Chappelle wanted to support him in his race for mayor and was willing to do free comedy shows. As a matter of fact, let's go on to my good old pal Kyle Kalinske um, so he can pretty much say uh, what happened. Back to the Chappelle thing. So what we know for sure is that Yang's team was like, this is not a good idea. And the reason they said it's not a good idea is because oh, Dave Chappelle is too controversial. Now, is Dave Chappelle controversial? Yes. All comedians, to one extent or another, are controversial. Honestly, guys, I, I'm at the point now of saying anybody who is even mildly interesting is considered controversial in today's day and age. Dave Chappelle, like him or hate him, is quite literally a living legend. He is one of the best comedians of all time, if not the best comedian of all time. I mean, his story is amazing. Walking away from Comedy Central at the height, the peak of his show, where he could have had millions and millions and millions of dollars, and he's like, I'm out, I'm going to Africa. And everybody's like, what the fuck is this? It turns out the guy was very, very sensitive to like how fucked up Hollywood was, and he just was grossed out by everything around Hollywood. So he's, there's like this mystique, this aura that he has. Now, again, has he said controversial things? Has he said things that I massively disagree with? Of course he has. Um, but he's a living legend and he's one of the best comedians in the world, if not the best comedian in the world. And Andrew Yang's team turned down free shows from Dave Chappelle when Dave wanted to get Andrew Yang, elected mayor of New York City. Now, by the way, I remember listening to Chappelle say something about why he, he originally wanted Yang for president, and then obviously he wanted him for New York City mayor. I think the reason why he wanted him for president had a lot to do with the UBI thing. I think Chappelle heard that, and he's like, yes, that's what people need. They need fucking money. People are struggling in this country, and you got to give them help. What's the fastest way to give them help? Give them money. 
So that was one of the uh, reasons why Chappelle supported Yang. But the fact that they said no is every single thing that's wrong with professional political strategists. Guys, understand something. They're party insiders. They're complete and utter hacks. And they're conventional wisdom humpers. So if I ever run for anything, and I'm not, by the way, or if you guys ever run for anything, let me give you a little tip. One of the things you should do is brag about the fact that not only you take no corporate money, not only you take no billionaire money, uh, you only raise through small dollar donations, but also you should say, I have zero political strategists. Now, policy advisors is something different. I would definitely say, go get policy advisors. Policy advisors are wonderful. I would never say get strategists. Why? Because strategists are just people whose job it is to tell you what they think other people want to hear. Which is super gross in and of itself. Why are you like trying to feel where the, the winds of the moment are blowing and then you're like, I'm, I'm going to go that way. No, if you're running for office, you should tell people exactly what it is that you believe. Tell people what you believe, tell people what you're, you'll fight for, and then they can either agree or disagree and vote for you or not vote for you. Now, maybe I'm old school, maybe I'm naive, maybe I'm simple, but that seems to me like the only honest way to go about doing this. And so he hires these strategists, by the way, a lot of Bloomberg's people. So he hires these professional strategists and they run his fucking campaign into the ground. So... The question is, do you think Dave Chappelle going on this campaign, doing these free shows, embracing Andrew Yang, and obviously uh, reeling in the black and Latino community, they're going to come see Dave Chappelle, um, would have saved Yang's campaign? No. No, I don't think so. I think it would have helped him immensely. He might not have been fourth place. He could have gone to third, maybe passed out Catherine Garcia. Um, but overall, I don't think it would have made that significant of a change. I think there was layers to, to what Yang needed to do, right? But this would have been definitely a step in the right direction. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I definitely would have uh, welcomed the support of Dave Chappelle um, during this campaign, um, anybody telling him that, no, you shouldn't do this was out of their mind. Um, and listen, the whole thing is, okay, he doesn't become mayor. The more you can diminish just how big the loss was or is in that race that you just had, the better. So if Yang would have came in as a number two, it would not look, have looked anywhere near as bad, anywhere near as bad. Right? It was the fact that he came in fourth that that really made him look bad. Even if he would have came in third, it wouldn't have been as bad. Um, so yeah, that that's what's been going around social media. Um, Dave Chappelle would have saved Yang Ken's pain. Dave, Ronnie, use your words. Dave Chappelle would have saved Yang's campaign. I don't think that to necessarily be true, but it definitely would have helped him immensely. Um, but it was so ugly and there were so many vicious things going back and forth and lies and hypocrisy um, that I think it was already, he was already in a little too deep. Um, he maybe needed to word things better, right? Obviously people were taking offense and there was a backlash to things he had said. Um, obviously he needed to word things better. But uh, there's no way uh, that Yang is racist. Um, and there's no way he didn't, uh, attempt to get the, the black and Latino support. He obviously knows he couldn't win New York without it. He just needed to do a better job at getting their support. Um, and I know it's easy for me to say while sitting in this chair, uh, being, doing armchair commentary, but, uh, it's evident he needed to do something different to get their support. What do you guys think he could have done? Right? How do you think uh, CNN um, did? Do you think they nailed it on the head? Do you think they're right? Do you agree with what they have to say? Um, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always interested to hear your opinions. Do you think Dave Chappelle would have saved the campaign? Let me know, guys. I thought this article was interesting. I just wanted to bring it to you. Everybody's got their own spin on it. 
because nobody expected Andrew Yang to lose in the fashion that he did. So, right, so it's still a little shocking. Definitely have some more content coming for you. Look out for it in the next day or two. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you tuning in. So, if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, please like, comment, subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you don't, let me know in the comment section why. I'm always down to talk about it. I have a Cash App, a PayPal, a Venmo, a Patreon. Please feel free to donate to the channel. Every little bit helps. Hopefully, I'll be talking to you guys soon. Have a good one. Peace. I'm feeling high, but sometimes I'm feeling low I wanna stay inside, I could call my bed my home I've been trapped inside my mind, that's what keeps me in the zone I think that I'll be fine, but I do not really know Yeah, It's too late for me, not too late for you To be great, you see, the pain's worth the truth I don't wanna be just someone that's new I speak my mind so free, so you could hear the truth Yeah, I know that we all have fear In the back of our minds we hear The devil that's in our ear Let it push you to see more clear I don't wanna think about the pain no more Everybody's not the same We all open different doors Yeah, we've all got different brains That's what keeps starting these wars I just stay within my lane Hope my words even score I just try to keep